Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And as you can tell, I'm in a studio and behind me is the new Aston Martin Vantage. And there's a whole spec sheet here we're gonna run through. It's really quite exciting, a new Aston. They don't come along very often. Some of the things that stand out from this spec sheet, just glancing through, first of all, out power outputs, 665 PS and 800 Newton meters of torque. That horsepower, that's a jump of about 165 horsepower over the previous base Vantage. Huge amount of power, a new look. And so I don't just go through the press release on this car. I've invited Simon Newton along, who is the director of vehicle performance at Aston Martin. This is his baby. He knows it inside out. So we're gonna move over, go around the car. Simon's gonna give us all the details on this new Aston. Thank you ever Hi. so much for this. My pleasure. I'm looking forward to it because okay. it's quite a car to go around and my goodness it's different. Yeah you can you explain your title? It's a director of vehicle performance. Right okay so, so it's a privileged job I have to say. It's essentially everything to do with the character of the car developing what we call the vehicle attributes. So right. that's everything from the way the car sounds, what the NVH is like, in, how quiet and refined it is, what it's like to steer, ride, handle, all those sorts of uh, customer facing characteristics. Right, so, and this one must be a bit of a dream because it's not your average sort of car, is it? What, what was the brief on this? I mean, it's because it's a race car as well, this, wasn't it? Yes, we definitely have race car derivatives. The brief of this was to keep the sports car true to the characters of classic Astons, front engine, yeah. rear drive, but with a huge uptick in performance and capability. <laughs> 202 miles an hour now Indeed. gone through and the, I keep thinking Aston Martin Vantage that's the entry level into Aston Martin this is like Porsche Turbo as your entry point as far as I can see yep is that... it's very much the theme now we're pleased to say we we strive for class leading performance but it's not just about the powertrain we have to make everything else complementary I mentioned the horsepower it's 30 percent up isn't it yeah 30 percent more power 15 percent yeah. more torque 15% more torque. And how did you gain that power? Obviously, we've got DB12. It's the same engine as previous Vantage. Just take me through how you gain that much over a regular Vantage. It's quite a departure in terms of the engine it, hardware itself. It's not carried over. It's a new block. It's new induction, new runners, oh, is new it? control right. systems. Uh, it's, it's very much um, bespoke tuned for the new generation sports cars this and its sister the db12 um, with its own unique tuned characteristics in the calibration yeah. uh, differentiating it between the sports car application and the grand tour okay uh, in addition to the power we further revisit almost every element of the car every element has been refreshed renewed uh, the, the drive line for example uh, we've shortened the final drive by five percent so that, that further okay. uh, brings the car to life. It's not just about the power. We've tried to touch every element of it. You did that on DB12 as well, didn't you? We, we did, yeah. It was uh, even more of a change on DB12, but this car being lighter didn't need so much. Going back to Director of Vehicle Performance, which cars have you basically titillated at Aston Martin? Which are the ones that have got your signature on? So I've been there for two years, and the first opportunity I had to help was the uh, DBS Ultimate 770. Oh. Right. And if you yeah. enjoyed that car, I'm sure you'll like this. We yeah. took a lot of the lessons learned from that and a lot of the themes in terms of the character of the car, and they've been amplified, if you like, with the benefit of more technology on these cars. This one is, I'd looked at the specs, 1,600 kilos or something? Yeah, 1,605 kilos, lightweight, dry. I presume that's, yeah, Ferrari speak for, yeah. you know, no battery fluids, carbon brakes and that sort of thing. Yeah. But... Is that lighter than the previous version? So it's neutral it? plus a little bit. Uh, I think the base car previous generation was 1640, not in its lightest. Trip. Oh, OK. With the power comes a lot of additional cooling and so forth. And as the world moves on, we have a few more safety systems. This does yeah. add weight, but we sought to neutralise that with, for example, every car has forged wheels as standard. Power to weight is 20% up is over the really? last car. Now, I think we ought to start here because it's a radical departure from what went before. Indeed. It looks fantastic, which is not something I said on the previous generation Vantage. I wanted to get to like it, but it never quite happened. Okay. This, but there's reasons behind it. Indeed, yeah. 
So the design's outside my remit of responsibility. <laughs> I'm more the oily bit. These features, which make it look wonderfully more aggressive, they do also have a practical benefit for yeah. our areas of engineering. So for example, that front grille, that's 38% bigger in overall aperture nice. size. Um, wow. And that has a, a great benefit for our, our cooling packs, as you can imagine. This engine needs much more cooling than the old ones. Um, we're actually getting about 29, 30% more flow to the coolers. And no force grills no, at all. It, it's, everything is functional. And there's a lot of rads in there, isn't there? There's yeah, so oil the, coolers the old car had the centre pack and then a single cooler on each side. We now have twin yeah. stack coolers, as we, as we describe them, one behind each other on both sides. Okay. And a significant, what we call piano cooler in the front. Piano, because it's like the orientation yeah. of a keyboard of a piano. I want to say that's an oil cooler, but it's probably something else, is it? It's not it? actually, it's, a, it's another water cooler. It's another water cooler. The, the oil coolers are on the side and they're twice as big as the old oh, ones. Are they? And I can see tyres through these vents. There are no force vents at all on this no. thing. That no. creates an air cu curtain, which the old car didn't have, and right. that feature's kind of mirrored on the back. We have functional vents at the rear wheel arches to reduce the pressure in the rear wheel arch. It's arch. just that much more muscle. Has it got a wider track as well, then? Yeah, overall the car's 30 mil wider, with a yeah. correspondingly widened track width, track width measured between the centres of the tyre, so it's up about 15, 20 mil uh, front and rear. And the other things you've done here, the headlights are new as well, aren't they? Is yep, Matrix, first application of Matrix technology and Vantage platform. So I'm guessing the structure of this, um, bonnet would be aluminium on here. Yep, like bonnet's aluminium, car. body side's aluminium. Composite elements are the front rear bumpers and the fenders. Oh, here. Oh, so, so this new shape then, that's done in composite yep. round here. I like composite because it doesn't dent. I presume it's light, but this is a fantastic new detail here. It's a, a fair bit deeper than the uh, feature on the old car, and it's functional again. Air flows from within the wheel arch down to the, oh. down the body side. Oh. oh, excellent. Excellent. And yeah, just while we're here, forged wheels, you were saying, and new tyres as well, aren't they? Yeah, all option wheels are forged, as I mentioned. They're upsized to 21 inch front to rear, but they're lighter, so we don't suffer any uh, degradation to ride comfort from that. The tyres are Michelin S5s. AML. Yes. Actually on the tyre. Yeah, and it's not just a branding. We spent a lot of time making it work, particularly for this car. This is new as well, isn't it? This is. This, I seem to remember that it has a point on the previous mirror. This is slightly different. Yeah, ni nice feature. Now the mirror head turns in completely itself. And so, uh. interesting fact, though the body sides are wider, the actual overall width of the car is now narrower thanks to right. this sleek design here, much more uh, closer to the I see. Line. Carbon roof as well. Yep. I'm going to get to the interior because I'm really quite excited about the interior in a moment, but that does look completely different, it doesn't is. it? I Absolutely. mean, yeah, Night just along. DB12 lines and then this muscle carries on and uh, yeah this this is new then this is where it vents out the rear yeah wing, that pulls air out of the wheel arch area good for brake cooling it's the whole thing this looks like it's got a body pack on it but I'm guessing this carbon is an option but the Venturi and all under there that's all yeah that shape is are. the same on yeah. all cars and no active wing on this car then no nothing flipping up or no wanted to keep it clean it doesn't need it Amazing, at 205 mile, 202 mile an hour, yep. I thought you might have some aero somewhere. Deliberately wanted just enough downforce or no lift so that the car is stable at speed, but we didn't want too much so that it influenced the dynamic behaviour. We didn't want it overly controlled, overly right. pushed down. Right. So as I understand it from here, the gearbox is integral, it's transaxle at the rear. Yep. But I'm surprised it's, if this is your GT3 car, it's not the dual clutch transmission type of thing you've stuck yeah. with a ZF. Yeah, yeah that's a, a common question and, and one we asked ourselves at the beginning of the new generation sports cars. The um, choice of a DCT for this application didn't add up for us for a number of reasons. Yeah. Um, one is that the amount of torque we have, there is a, a, a physical limitation on most DCTs and it oh, couldn't cope with the amount of torque right. we have. Secondly, the technology we have, which is um, torque converter based, always keeps a little bit of positive torque engagement through the shift, whereas a DCT uh, is a complete brake. And yeah. as we trialled in the prototype environment, DCTs, we found that torque interrupt was a little bit unsettling for the back of the car. So that plus the weight, right. it was definitely a, a conscious decision to keep with, and keep with this technology. 
and ZF have done amazing things, yeah, haven't I they? I mean, basically what we carried forwards was the gear ratios because we particularly like the spacing. Yeah. Uh, and the speed at which we go through the gear ratios is increased thanks to the final drive. But the speed of the shift and the quality of the shift is quite different, mainly thanks to ZF re-engineering the hydraulic pathways through the, through the unit so that we can get the shift speed up. And then we've worked a lot on speed dependent, load dependent shift feel to give you enough of a feel um, without it being an uncomfortable artificial torque interrupt. Well, from the outside, more muscle, great looks and reason behind how, why it looks the way it does is cool. I think we ought to have a look inside. Now that is completely different. Sea chains, looks, you still got the torture seat so. <laughs> <laughs> or is there, there must be an option, are they? They are an option. Yeah, on there. Where did you have that? It was on the V12 Vantage, wasn't it? Is, is that those seats? Yep, that's ex exactly it. Yeah, which I swore every time I got in and out, and actually once I was in, I quite liked them. <laughs> but they are an option, aren't yes. they? Yeah, but completely different on here. My goodness, it's changed. Yeah, so we worked hard to get this nice balance between um, tech and uh, more tactile hard keys, as we call them, hard buttons. So you don't have to dive into the menus when you want to make changes yeah. if you don't want to. In the centre uh, console, and As yeah. you just noticed, another uh, driver facing feature is that those paddles They're are lovely. now steering wheel mounted rather than column oh, mounted. Oh, yes. But big, though, not just an afterthought, proper. Yeah. yeah. That is a big change, isn't it? It's just, the, it's just the quality of the knurling and it's what you wanted it to be. And you've got quite a lot of systems on this car, aren't there? Yeah. This is the, where the real work has sort of seems to look in through here there's pages of it on we just say stability control it's not like that anymore no, is it really. we needed to massively re-engineer the amount of structural stiffness that the car has so global stiffness is up a large amount as is importantly the local stiffness is so where the suspension attaches to the body yeah. Uh, we paid particular attention to that so that when you have a powerful tire those forces can be reacted into the body and you don't waste that um, level of capacity. The systems that you were mentioning, they are advanced systems from our technology partner, Bosch, as DB12, but tuned slightly differently. Well, you turn this up, it has a standard setting, what I was looking at, and you've got this one to eight, hasn't it, on yeah. the traction control. Yeah. That wasn't on Vantage at all before, yeah. was it, that level of adjustability? No, no, quite right. Uh, the reason we can do that now is overall the system is a lot more advanced. So the heart of the system is now more model-based. We've got a very advanced accelerometer, which tells the control systems exactly what the car is doing. It's very good at yeah. estimating what's going on. So you don't have to wait for the car to get into trouble before the, the systems detect this and come in. They can predict, given certain set of circumstances, when to come in and come in more gently to help you rather than to lock the car down. Those systems and that fidelity also let you fine-tune things like slip control. So we yeah. have, as you mentioned, the adaptive yeah. traction control. You can set it to any position you want. It, in that setting, you don't have any your control, so no other stability interventions other than being able to vary the amount of traction you've got. So essentially right. it slows down how the car yours when you're under power. When you're spinning up the back wheels, you can have that more or less aggressive in the speed at which it breaks away, which is uh, a useful tool in different conditions, and yeah. it's good fun and it's a good learning aid. Yeah, yeah. so it's, you're not calling it a drift control then. Don't want to use that word, mm -hmm. but it does act, sort of act as one if you've got it on one. Yes. Yeah. Or is it the other way, or is it eight? Which is the one? So nine is off. Nine is off, so is, eight, five eight is, is, is yeah. yeah. Five is kind of an optimised position, and in that setting, that's your optimised launch setting. Oh, okay. And then you can wind it down if you want more help, and up if you want less. Right, right. So it, someone explained to me that it was its performance enhancer rather than a preventer. You know, that we've got used to traction controls being clumsy and yeah. sort of interfering. Yeah. Yeah. That's not the case here. So yeah, that, that's absolutely right. Yeah. That carries on the philosophy you enjoyed in DBS Ultimate, where it's really much very seamless in its interaction yeah. with the uh, powertrain. Yeah, they're the ones you like that you don't need, you just don't think about turning it off. So we, I think we ought to have a look under the bonnet, look at this powerhouse. Okay. <laughs> I love how you do this. There's the centre line of the wheels and it's right tucked the up the back. Turbo, yeah, turbo's in the thing. In yeah. terms of the structural elements, yeah. um, 
we have much more stiffness coming from the engine cross member, the upper cross member as we call it. That's that part on the top. Yeah. Uh, and then we have linking the front longerons together. We've got uh, sections of extrusion, aluminium, linking the two, really holding the front of the car together so that when you're steering, you're not just moving, displacing the front of the car laterally, everything's locked in. And so that steering feel can go straight to the column rather than being lost in the body flexing. Engine, is it your spec or is it just an AMG spec, this engine? No, it's very much our own spec. We um, had quite the, the choice of um, combinations of hardware. We chose what went together and AMG, our technology partner, supplied that, this to us, hand-built engine. And importantly, we further make it our own with all the calibrations, which is key to differentiating. You say the block's different, the head's different, isn't it? Um, but the turbo's... They're different, different as well. Yep. The whole thing. So it's a sea yeah. change. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not the same engine it's, carried forward. It's completely yeah. different. You're not going to get old Vantage engines trying to tweak no. this and trying to make it in no. six hundred. No. no. When you get in the, the older cars, they you get used to this as the new normal. I yeah. still remember the surprise when we first ran these power outputs. It was. It, it, a brilliant uptick, up, up up, um, quite literally um, yeah. breathtaking. And now you go back to the other cars, and although they are brilliant fast cars, yeah. it's, it's in a, these are in a different league. It must be. It's just numbers on here, but that is a serious output, isn't it? And with the backup of that amount of torque, isn't it? It's 2,000 yeah. RPM peak torque. That's another reason why we don't necessarily want a DCT. So DCTs are great for um, engines with slightly less torque, where you yeah. always want a reaction from the powertrain to keep you in the right power band. Yeah. We like to um, use all the rev range rather than the, just the top end, and a DCT is unnecessarily reactive for our application. Now, so there's a, a couple of things in the press release that I don't know what it's talking about. Let's kick off with, they're talking about the adapt, new adaptive dampers. We have a 500% increase in bandwidth, a forced distribution over previous generation hardware. Yeah. Basically, what it means is they're very powerful and they're very quick to react. And we can have this duality of character. We can have the nice primary motion in the car, but when we need the response and the control, it's there as soon as you put the uh, cornering input in. Okay, so if I get in it, what mode is it in? Yeah, so it's in uh, Sport. That's our default mode for yeah. Vantage. Um, it's actually got five drive modes, Sport, Sport Plus, Track. Right. Then you've got Wet Mode and Individual. Individual, ah. you can change any number of the driver-centric parameters, uh, steering, dampers, powertrain calibration, and oh, ESP. excellent. And that's more than previous Vantage? Yeah. More adjustment? Absolutely. So uh, individual is um, very useful to get your f preferred combination. Wet is very beneficial for even the dry handling. And the reason for that is if you've got a dedicated wet mode, you can set your parameter set uh, in the dry modes to be a little bit closer to the bone, a little bit more oh, reactive I see. I mean, because you've got the safety net of a dedicated wet mode right. for lower mu conditions. Oh, right. So you want people to use the wet mode rather yeah, than ignore it. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. It's not just... Um, a nanny mode, it's definitely yeah. a performance in hardware. If you want to make fast cross-country progress in difficult conditions, that is the mode. Right. And then another little bit I've underlined here, the fitment of a non-isolated steering column. Okay. No idea. Well, you didn't know, but you enjoyed that on DBS Ultimate. Did Essentially, I? previous cars with a little bit less structure had uh, an NVH, noise vibration harshness, coupling in the steering column, a compliant element, if you like. Oh, okay. Uh, now we have better damping and better structure and um, can we can afford to take that element out so you've got a better connection all the way through the steering column to the tyre contact patch, gives you better feel, but because of all those other good things around it, we don't lose any levels of refinement. Okay, so I'm uh, Aston being very mean and not letting me drive this until about April, May time or something. So what's it like to drive? It's every day enjoyable in that it breathes, as I may have mentioned yeah. before, it's got this nice primary character to it, but the systems give you that much more control when you want it. Um, and its overall level of capability, its capacity, is completely night and day to the previous car. It's got so much more grip, yet still preserves that nice short car connected feeling that yeah. advantages have always enjoyed. Right. Does it sound good? It sounds fantastic. <laughs> It's got a really brutish uh, soundtrack. Yeah. It's got no valves in the exhaust. It's uh, very much alive. It's got an industrial um, raw sound to the, uh, the engine on song. Really good. 
I have to say, it's, it's sort of refreshing that at no point have we mentioned hybrid or anything to do with batteries or mild yeah. hybrid or something like that. Yeah, was it considered yeah, at all? Yeah, more conscious decisions on our part. Technologies like hybrid at the moment, um, DCTs and indeed rear steer, we yeah. chose deliberately not to go there. We wanted this yeah. sort of purity of sports car feel that we've always been known for. Yeah. So we pushed them to the side. We didn't want anything interrupting the connection for the steering. We didn't want any torque distribution varying how the car responds. We wanted to keep it clean, but with right. this huge increase in yeah. performance to complement that base, complement that base characteristic. Yeah. Well, thank you, Simon. Great to talk around the car. If someone actually knows it much better than just from a press release. It's You're been really welcome. useful. I'm now just going to wait until April, May time, try it for myself. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the new Aston Martin Vantage with Simon Newton. I always think it's really useful to get the guys who have been behind the scenes working on this car for, well, a couple of years, I think he said. And it's their... It's like their baby, they know the inner details of it and they have the best way of describing what this car is going to be like. As I say, I'm waiting for a few months before we can drive it. I've squeezed a, a sort of guide price out, about 160, 165,000 pounds, this car. So a, a bit of a lift over the standard Vantage, but pretty close to where the F1 version of the current Vantage sits. But from my point of view, it's just the look of it. It looks like a proper Aston. There's no excuses on this Aston. You look at that, the presence of it almost has a bit of Aston 177 at the front. And with that new interior and all that horsepower, yeah, I have to say it's my sort of car. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.